Hello guys and welcome to FYP and in this video we'll be taking a look at how to use the Hubble Legacy Archive to get the colorful images of your favorite object. Um, and for this purpose we are taking the Whirlpool Galaxy and um, M29 and 29, I'm sorry, which is the Twin Jet Nebula. So um, we'll be taking a look at how to, how to, how to get the image of this Whirlpool Galaxy and uh, uh, Twin Jet Nebula from the Hubble Legacy Archive. So, um, first thing to note about astronomical object is the right ascension and declination. So, uh, the position of this particular object in the sky is given by a right ascension that you see on the screen is right ascension and declination. So, um, the first that is the key property of any astronomical object is finding out the right ascension and declination. Now you don't need to go, you don't need to struggle too much because Wikipedia gives you that information, right ascension of so much and a declination of so much. Most of these cataloged objects usually ha come with a, um, a right ascension and a declination and that's how, that's sort of like how you tell other astronomers, hey look at this point in the sky, um, you know, this of this right ascension and this declination and this is what I see, okay. And um, let's take a look at this amazing galaxy Messier 51. Um, most of these catalogued objects you don't need to worry about because uh, uh, Hubble you can just feed in the M51 and not worry too much about the right ascension and declination because it's already fed into the legacy archive. Okay this is the Hubble legacy archive and let's enter the site and uh, it treats you with the simplistic search result and uh, let's type in m uh, it's the m m51 now it'll search its database and give you this inventory of all the images that it has of this particular object now the most important most fascinating um, aspect to this page is the footprints because Hubble has this huge plethora of s instrument that ha that it has and that it uses so we don't need all the instruments and we only want uh, like let's say if you want only pretty images you only want that particular uh, segment of the image so like y there are too many data point data that is that is being collected by Google and you don't need all of it and so unless you actually need it. Uh, so let's deselect all of that and just look at ACS which is the advanced camera survey um, and it, and even with the advanced camera survey you get like 505-556 tiles of images now we are kind of looking for the overall image right we, we want the overall let's say we want to look at the entire whirlpool galaxy let's select this one this one covers the entire entire object in its fullest and just click on that and it'll turn bright and then we can just scroll down and then it'll give you it'll give you this it'll give you all the images in the database which correspond to your selection over here so all these five images have the particular region uh, that you are looking for and uh, out of these images we color images in this database are given by level 4 now you can take a look at the uh, documentation for the Hubble legacy archive and find out what other levels are but in this video we are looking at only color images and that's level 4 and once you once you find some level 4 image um, just hit display and um, take a while and um, first thing to note is uh, these are different these are different filters that are present on uh, you can just play around with them too uh, if you do not like the view that you're looking at um, as far as this case is concerned we are pretty happy let's zoom out and there we go this is the Hubble this is the um, Hubble's rendition of the Whirlpool galaxy pretty cool now you can, you can, if you sort of adjust the uh, 
different filters you get different sometimes you might be able to have much more information about the object by just playing around with these filter types and uh, and that's why that's why you you've been given this option of playing around with this filter type so this is this is the actual image that Habu has taken and um, and how you you just go here and hit save current view and then boom save file that's it actual image of the whirlpool galaxy from the hubble database captured boom that's about that's as simple as it gets oh, um, okay let's head back and um, most of these objects sort of let's try m1 uh, which is the crab nebula um, this is the crab nebula and um, as as I told you before, the AC has a lot of these images. And let's select one of them. Let's select this slice, which is sort of towards the right of the image. Um, um, okay, let's just select the four. If you go here and click on four, um, you get this huge level of huge, huge options that you have. And um, it's pretty much the same procedure. I'll just wait for it to load. Um, <laughs> All right. That's that's one slice of the uh, that's towards the very the right slice of the crab nebula. Now, now the Hubble Legacy Archive is just an example that I wanted to start off with because. Uh, let's take this example of um, M29, which is the twin jet nebula that is talking to you about. Let's copy that and uh, M29. Okay. Now you can see that it has Hubble has nothing on it. Hubble the Hubble Legacy Archive has. So what do we do when the Hubble Legacy Archive just gives up on us and does not give you any of these images? So um, th what you do is the Hubble Legacy is not the only survey that is there. Um, so if you go to astronomical surveys, there are these huge um, surveys conducted by different organizations. Uh, some look for a particular object like supernovas and so on. Uh, whereas some are much more general, uh, look at a much more wider field. So one such example is the Pan Star Survey, which is from the ground. Like this is a telescope that's situated on the ground that looks at the sky, and um, as you can see, the M29 is is not on the Hubble Legacy Archive, but on the Pan Stars. On the other hand, let's hit submit. And these are different filters, as you can see, color, G, R, I, Z, Y. And uh, there we go. This is the, this is the twin, uh, twin jet nebula on the pan stars data. Now, okay, uh, you might be thinking, oh, this image that you see is on Wikipedia is so beautiful. Uh, <laughs> this, um, usually takes a lot of hours of very talented people working with the data set from if there is a Hubble data set from Hubble or Panstars of, of, of all these surveys and sitting with Photoshop and and playing around with this and uh, you can see a video uh, I'll link a video of um, a time of, of, one of this one person on YouTube who, who 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 goes through this entire process and shows it to you uh, so it takes a long time and it's sort of like overlapping different images and um, you know and making sure that you get the detail right and the position of the stars right and combining different patching up different images so it's a it's a it's a it's a whole other process but the whole the point of point is that you can just take the raw image from this from any of these surveys by just the simple process of just going typing the typing in the object's name and then uh, we are good to go. Okay. Now, as a final note, I want to add to you, add also what what to do when you do not have the uh, uh, 
that if, if it's not a cataloged object like m1 is a cataloged object so but so what you do is you take the right ascension and the declination and you just hit enter so this is um, right ascension declination and then if you, once you do that it's the same thing again you go to the footprints and then you look at the entire image and you select the image and then you're good to go so only thing that changes if for an object that you do not know do not know whether it's catalog or not you just feed in the right ascension and declination and then boom you have the same object hit display and uh, that's it um, so this was just a quick tutorial because a lot of people are asking you know uh, how do you how, how do astronomers actually look at objects so this is why this after the 1990s or so most of these things are uh, online and people can just access them publicly um, and just uh, grab images actual raw data image from Hubble telescopes and uh, I thought this would, we thought it would be a very good idea to just show you very quickly how to use the Hubble legacy archive to just get any image that you want so um, that's about it thank you for watching and have a good one bye bye